Today, we have a very special guest, Shannon Todd. Shannon has been serving as an OCMC missionary near Tijuana, Mexico, in partnership with Project Mexico and St. Innocent Orphanage for the past three years. She's honored to work with and tutor youth ministry programs there and to serve local developing Eucharistic communities, drawing on her prior experience in education and youth work and fulfilling her heart's desire to serve the Lord and his people abroad. Welcome, Shannon, to the program. Hi, thank you. I understand you're on furlough now. So why are you on furlough and what do you plan to do during this time? <laughs> um, well, yes, it's been a good time. I'm here in Colorado visiting my family and friends. And that's one of the main reasons to take furlough is to reconnect, um, go in person and see everybody. Um, and then also decompress. Uh, life of a missionary can be... Um, challenging but good so it's good to kind of take a break and and reset and so some of it is decompressing and also reflecting um it's been a really good time uh to think about resetting and going back um hoping to return for another two years and so this is a wonderful time to reconnect with everyone um another reason i'm here is to actually share my story and share the story of the people in Mexico and, and connect them with people here too. Um, we're all one big spiritual family. So um, I feel like a little bit of a myrrh bearing woman, like running back to tell everybody um, amazing things that God's done in our lives there in Mexico um, and what we believe he may continue to do there. And um, it's really exciting. So another reason is to share these stories and, um, connect people and another reason is to possibly with god willing inspire the next couple missionaries um that's a big ask but um it is good to share this story as i'm reconnecting with people and then um you know encouraging others to share their talents and their time in whatever way they can with Christ. And so um, I hope that that also might inspire a couple others to to answer the call. Let's talk about that for a minute. My late wife and I, we always talked about that when we were first married. We've got to go to missionary work. We've got to go to Africa. we got to go here. we got to go there. And we never went, unfortunately. So what I want you to do, because I think there are other people out there who see you and witness the great work of OCMC, they might say, you know, maybe I should do that too. So let's talk about mission work. What is it that you hope other people would know about your work? What's so special about it? Um, well, for me, it's so special <laughs> because it it did like, I had that thought, maybe I should do this. Um, but for a long time, almost seven years, I talked with those teams and was like, you know, should I do this? Mm -hmm. But it was never the right place, right time. It just didn't seem like a good fit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was kind of thinking, oh, they need priests or, oh, they need doctors. Um, they need some really like key people and they didn't need, you know, just some young unexperienced person is what I thought. But, um, you know, thank God, like over the course of a couple of years, like uh, he showed me that it, it, something came up. And so then it was the right time. And so um, I kind of hope people know that you don't have to be like, an exact expert in a certain field before you can go you there are, there are many places around the world that just need humble servants i guess like they need people that are willing to learn and people that are willing to commit to a time um and be flexible <laughs> um so i hope people know that this is something really special and really personal too um it is like a spiritual journey it's a calling. Um, so it takes time to kind of listen to God and, and talk with a spiritual father and determine, is this something I should do? Um, and that's really special for me. It's been an amazing journey. <laughs> and now it's led to this place that I love so much and these people that I love so much. So, um, I hope people know that it's not easy and it's not, um, it's not for everybody, <laughs> but, uh, but but some people are called to it and, and it's really, really special when that happens. Um, just from my personal experience. <laughs> well, look, the, the great commission is not something that uh, we take lightly. I mean, 
making disciples of all nations is not it's not for the weak let's put it that way um, <laughs> what is it that many people don't get about the great commission of christ making disciples of all nations yeah it in another sense it it's almost it is for everyone right because it's it's a command from christ and it's part of being orthodox is you know making disciples and, and continuing to teach them and walk alongside them and you know, as a community, we go, we go towards him. Um, so in some sense, it's for everyone in that, in that area, um, to be truly apostolic and to truly be disciples. Um, we have to pass that on to other people and, and share his love. It's not just for us and us in Christ. It's for other people too. So in, and, in and it's, sense, a, it's a life changing it's experience. It's, it's a life changing experience. Is it not for you and for others whom you've witnessed both as a missionary and those you mission to? I mean, I can't speak for everyone there, but I do have a little story that's encouraging to me mm -hmm. um, because I, for me, yes, absolutely. It's been huge to really fully participate in my faith and, and the Orthodox practices and then to attempt to pass those on to someone else and realize, oh, I don't know about that part. I got to learn about that part. Like, um, it's wonderful. <laughs> so I'm, I'm committed to continuing to learn and, um, and then also try to pass that on. Um, and so that's amazing. I, I'm indebted, um, <laughs> not indebted, but you know, um, it's, it's really special for me, but then, um, it's hard to speak for other people, but at the same time, like people have come back and told me a little, some little bits. Um, and so one thing I'm thinking of is, um, about two years ago, we were coming out of out of COVID and and the 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 parish and the orphanage and everything was a little bit more closed off, um, of course. And so, but we had a couple of families that would still come to church. Um, and one of the parishioners shared with me that kind of before this time where we were trying to like reopen and, and welcome people back and remind them that they're they're welcome and that um you know we need we need each other and we we need this community um before that they a person told me like they were thinking about moving to the united states because they felt like they were the only orthodox people around and the only ones doing what they were doing and they felt really alone mm -hmm. and um but then they told me uh as a family and they told me like they they made the decision like oh okay we don't need to do that we can we can be orthodox here in mexico and we're not the only ones anymore <laughs> um and glory to god he is like growing that little church little by little and so already someone someone said like yeah this is changing my life this is wonderful like this growing community and um what god's doing there there's been a there's been a change <laughs> and maybe some of that's due to covid but also like uh, it's really great to see and it's continued. So finally, let me ask you specifically about Project Mexico. Uh, talk about what you've seen there uh, so far and what your hopes are for the future. Yeah, okay. Well, I've seen a lot, but uh, good and bad. And it's been my honor to witness. <laughs> um, I've seen our kids go through. Um, online school and everything and then I had to be flexible and and we we saw that this was such a good fit for me that I I love like teaching Sunday school and I love youth programs and everything and so not just helping them with um, schooling but then also with their spiritual formation has been a huge gift for me it's something I love to do and um, and then they see that and they they enter into that um, and so being flexible and 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 moving with that we've done a couple different things um I was challenged with providing a youth retreat and we were able to do that. Um, we ended up doing a high school retreat and then a middle school retreat and somebody even brought their friend and that was really exciting. Um, and then the following year, so two years in a row, we were able to have multiple youth retreats. Um, and then we even ended up having a family retreat um, and that was wonderful. That was something I didn't expect but um, people were interested in and again like there were a couple new people that weren't orthodox but that were interested and they came um and so just being there and being available 
I've seen a lot of amazing things and I really can't take credit for them, but I was there to help and to participate how I could. Um, and I tried to support at the time it was our deacon Alejandro and try to support him and Father Nicholas, our executive director, the clergy, try to support them in what I could and kind of just running around and, you know, setting up tables or, um, you know, just saying hello to people and, and welcoming them. Um, and that's been really amazing. So just that <laughs> was something that I was challenged with and I wasn't sure I could do, but then, you know, it worked out as a team, we, we were able to do it. Um, so that was really nice. And since then, like, we're hoping to continue that and maybe even bring in a couple of other Spanish or Spanish speaking Orthodox um, to help encourage the people here, just based on what I just told you, like, um, it's really powerful to hear someone else's story, even just meeting someone else from another country that's orthodox or from another state um or just me here like going to different parishes and hearing people's stories and you know how did you become orthodox and how did you you know how do you feel about god right now like um it's do, do really have, encouraging let me ask you this do you have to speak spanish at project mexico um depends on your job but <laughs> most most people do need to to speak some spanish at least okay. um and for me i'm working with the teens and the kids a lot and um and then other local uh spanish speakers and so um it's really important um and there are some people that can kind of like come and and you know they have a base base but they can also like oh do chauffeuring or or do you know just come and play with the kids that's awesome um but that's in cool. order to communicate with you know your superiors or in order to mm -hmm. um even enter into the liturgical services are in Spanish and English. Mm -hmm. So that's really great. Like most people in our area, it's right by the border of the US and Mexico. So a lot of people do learn English. And so there's a lot of bilinguals and that's great. Um, so Very but good. it is well, really important. Shannon, we thank you for being with us today. Uh, we hope you'll enjoy and uh, recharge yourself during your furlough. And uh, we ask everyone, of course, who sees our programs to support OCMC and especially its missionaries who do wonderful work for the Great Commission, baptizing all nations in the name of Christ. <laughs>